Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Well, it's uh, the middle of September. I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada, and so the middle of September around here often means we've had a, a hard frost already, definitely some light frosts, and yet we haven't in my little, little yard anyways. I know some people around here have. Um, but things, it's definitely getting cooler during the days, cooler at night, and things are, are starting to slow down and, and, and lose their vigor, and the season is definitely coming to an end. And I don't know about some of you, but the end of the season always brings some mixed feelings for me. I'm always kind of, you know, I'm, I'm happy for the, the more relaxed time in the garden and, you know, less, less physical labor and that that needs to be done right now. But uh, it's kind of sad too that the, the growing season is ending. And here, I know this will all be covered in snow, um, you know, in a, just a few months, so. I love the change of seasons. I love what they bring, but uh, they can be kind of, kind of hard to, to look at for me. So not to bring you down, but I just thought, in light of that today, what I want to do. Um, I have a few. I have a job I need to do for just getting things ready that can't be out in the cold this winter. But I thought to start things off, I would just go around and pick some of the beautiful flowers that I still have, like these gorgeous sunflowers here. I don't know what this variety is, and I can't find the tags for it. But very pretty. Um, so I thought I'd just go through. There's still lots of beautiful things blooming, and put together a nice bouquet because you know playing with the flowers always makes me feel a little happier. And I thought after I get the flowers cut, I'll go and dig up my ranunculus um, corms because I still need to do that. They're planted in where my melons are, so I've been kind of waiting so I didn't disturb the melons roots too much. But I think it's time. I need to get that done. So I, let's get started with picking a few beautiful flowers, putting together just a nice simple bouquet, and uh, then we'll get the ranunculus dug up. Queenie lime orange zinnias here. This hydrangea is just gorgeous. Just turns this gorgeous pink in the autumn. So that's one of those, those delights in the autumn, to see the, the hydrangeas turn color. I could use some of this echinacea, but I don't think I'm going to take any of it today. I might get, there's a, some amaranth there. Might be nice. To have. I have this gorgeous orange dreamsicle dahlia, and yeah, I didn't have it staked up properly, and it's kind of crazy. But I might take it. It's almost done. Almost past its prime, but maybe I can do something interesting with it. Look at these adorable teddy bear sunflowers. They're pretty much blown too far though, I think, to, to bother cutting. Um, they're so cute though. I've been loving these prairie, prairie sun, I think they are. Rebecca. Been blooming all summer. Really pretty, and some of them get smaller blooms. There, none of them are quite the same. So, I believe that's Madame Butterfly Bronze Snapdragons. Gorgeous. I have this crazy love. Dahlia. It's not the greatest looking Dahlia, but I think I'm going to take this one. I found them getting really damaged by insects this year and not growing as full as they usually do. They usually have like a real outline of purple on them, which they haven't gotten this year. They smell almost peppery. I just remembered I had this gorgeous Cafe au lait Dahlia here. It doesn't exactly go with the color theme, but I think I can make it work. It's going in anyways. Okay, so let's see what we can do with this uh, selection here. It's kind of an oddball group of plants that I've picked out. This Cafe au lait is quite large and actually kind of faces up. Not all Dahlias do. And that's some nice leaves that I think are high enough up that I can leave in and just kind of work around to get some foliage options. I think I'll kind of work my way around it um, and see, 
see what I can do. We'll throw the amaranth in here. And I grabbed some gara, which will add some nice movement. So let's see if we can just get some pops of gara going around the sides here. Work them all around. Yeah, I like the looks of that. Um, let's maybe grab some of these zinnias. I think most of these are Queenie Lime Orange. And even though this is such a, a pink, bold pink um, Dahlia, I think I can still get away with this because it has almost pinkish undertones to the orange. It's like kind of a peachy orange. And I'll maybe put a couple of these marigolds in with it as well. I need something a little heavier in there. Maybe where these echinacea seed heads come in. So I just took the, the echinacea flowers and I just took some that were pretty much finished anyways and I just pulled the petals off around the sides and they leave these very interesting seed heads, which I love to use almost more than the echinacea um, in arrangements. I don't know, I'm not loving that. Sometimes you just keep adding the flowers in though and it comes together. I feel like I have too much marigold right here. I'll move this one over if I can get it. Put it over here. Bees have found the flowers here. There, that's giving more textures and kind of flower colors there. Now this dahlia kind of faces out, so I'll just tuck it, push it back in here. So it kind of faces out with the rest. I don't want to forget these sunflowers, because even though they're smaller sunflowers, they're still going to need their space. And again, they kind of face out so we need to let them, let them do that. Put this one back here. Yeah, I like that. That's what that needed was that, that oomph. And now I really want these Queenie, or no Queenie, um, <laughs> these uh, Madame Butterfly Bronze Snapdragons to find a home in here. Now they want to kind of bend that way, so I'm just going to take it and kind of run it over the other flowers until it kind of stands up a bit. So there it's kind of standing up more now. And I purposely picked some that were not open at the top yet because I like that kind of movement and shape in a bouquet like that. Let's stick a couple more over here. I like the way this is coming along. It's actually, I think that Cafe Ole is working in there. Now let's see once we get this orange, orange dahlia. It's kind of a, a unique color. I might just let it just hang the way it wants to hang and just let it sit over the side of the, the vase a little bit. I think it might actually look nice. A couple of these Prairie Sun Rebecca. I thought I had more, maybe not. No, I did pick some Cosmos just because I thought that color would kind of help bring that color down a little bit. And then I picked some Cosmos that actually haven't started their flower yet because I just thought the uh, the texture of the foliage would be nice to add in. Yeah, it's amazing what that different texture can do. Now I do have this couple zinnias that are 
a little more to the red side. Let's see. I don't think we'll add that one. It's pretty far gone anyways. I grabbed a couple of Amobium, just a little bit more of that movement. Just have like three, I think, so we'll just kind of spread them out. Well, that's a nice movement in this one. Don't want to bury that sunflower. Come here, sunflower. Bee buzzing around. I don't know if you can see it there. So. And then I grabbed this Culver's root. Again, just a different texture to throw in, just to put around the edges. There's no flowers on it. It'll just give a bit of texture around the sides here in the foliage. I love foliage in a, a bouquet. I think it kind of makes or breaks the look. And then I just grabbed this single peony stem of just, just the leaves. We'll try and just find somewhere just to wrap it around. Peony foliage is great. Um, we haven't had cold enough nights yet to turn it color, but it'll turn just this gorgeous reddish, bronzish kind of color in the autumn, and it's just absolutely stunning. So if you have peonies, don't count them out yet uh, in your, your flowers. They do a great show in the spring with the flowers, and then the foliage can be used all year for um, bouquets. You don't want to cut it right back. You want to have something to give it some life still, but there, I'm really happy with that. I'm loving that. So what do you think? Trim it up a bit. I'll just toss that flower. So hopefully I cut it to a nice length for this vase I picked out, but I really like that. I'm really happy with that. So yeah, see, flowers always cheer me up. I'm in a better mood now. And I can go get that ranunculus dug out and uh, stored away for the winter. So pop these in here. Maybe had it a little taller. I might find a shorter vase inside, but that's beautiful. Yeah, I like it. So let's go get that ranunculus. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. So I have my ranunculus planted in these big planters here um, that my melons are growing in, and there's also some gladiolus. Uh, the gladiolus will have to come out as well for the winter. Um, so I may just find up taking it out as I go through here just because it might be hard to dig around and get the ranunculus without the glads. I think I have two, maybe three ranunculus in each of these pots and they should all be kind of towards the outside of the pots, not towards where the trellis is. Uh, there's three more of these pots on the other side with more in and then I have some in hanging baskets actually on the on the deck. So I'm just going to dig around and try and find them. They're not a very big corm so hopefully I can find them in here and get them pulled out this looks like yeah this looks like the tag for them so we'll pull that out so I have it in the storage and I'm just gonna kind of dig around now, I didn't bring my trowel because I think the soil should be pretty soft and I want to be able to dig and feel hopefully they haven't rotted away I'm a little bit concerned about that because I've been watering the watering the melons so much um, and the foliage has pretty much died right off but we'll get in here and we'll see what we can find. So we'll just grab the glads I think while I'm in here they also need to be stored and I'll just I'll probably just lay them out like I would with onions I'll just lay them out somewhere where they won't freeze and they won't be in direct sun but they'll get good air circulation and let this foliage die back a bit and then they just get stored um, just kind of dry in a cool place. Okay, ranunculus. Do we have any of you in here? Oh, well, no. They're such an odd little corm. I don't know how easy they'll be to find. Well, if nothing else, I'll get the glads done out of here. Hopefully I find a few ranunculus. While I'm digging around. Like I said, they may have rotted away too, so I don't I don't know. And they don't get planted real deep. I think if they're in here, I should come across them pretty easily. 
I am not finding any ranunculus. I hope the rest of the buckets aren't aren't the same situation because I really wanted to save them. Oh, what's this? Nope. Well, I'm just going to keep digging around in here. The ranunculus shouldn't be planted very deep, and if I come across any in a pot, I will show you what they look like. Hopefully I find some somewhere. Lots of these beautiful glads, though. This looks like a ranunculus stem, maybe. Let's see. Yep, there's a ranunculus. Quite a bit of soil around it. But I don't know how well you can see there with all that soil on it, but you see those little kind of legs sticking out there. That's that's the ranunculus corm there. So I'll need to kind of rinse it off maybe and then it'll get stored. So I'm gonna put this in my basket for now. Hopefully I can find a few more. That's good. So I saw the stem, so maybe I'll find a few more stems. I'll be able to find the plants. Get the rest of these glads and maybe I'll find another ranunculus. Who knows? So with the gladiolus, you see it's formed all these little tiny kind of baby corms around the bottom here. And that's what some of these smaller ones were that I planted in the spring. And you see they've grown a little bit. They would have started out kind of like this size. And then they grow. And so they don't necessarily produce a flower stalk when they're that size. Um, but they, they produce lots of foliage and then they just get bigger and bigger. And then I think it's like about the third year that they'll produce bloom. So again, I'm pretty sure that's a ranunculus bit of foliage there. So I'll get these glads out of the the way and then I should be able to get that ranunculus out. You could use a trowel but I just find when you're digging stuff like this if it's soft soil it's just better to go without and then um, without the trowel and then you're less likely to damage the corms and things underneath. Looks like I have some club root in here. This is a little bit concerning. That's club root, which I didn't even know Glad's could get. So that's just gonna go in the trash. So this I'm pretty sure is a ranunculus. But, yep. There, that's a better view of what the corm looks like there. You see all those little kind of tentacly things? That's one big corm. And I could probably take it and divide it, but I'll leave it all together for the winter. I'll just take the, the stems off. I'll get a little rinse probably just to clean it off. And uh, it just gets stored in a mesh bag in a cool, like, around 10 Celsius area in the dark over the winter. Yeah, this glad looks a little crazy too. I don't know. It kind of looks like club roots starting on that as well. It's not a good thing. I'll have to look that up, but since I have lots of glads, any that look like that, I'm just going to throw away. They're cheap, they're easy to get a hold of, and they multiply quite quickly, so... Yeah, see, there's another little one that looks funky. I have to get a bucket out here to put those in. They'll go in the trash. I won't compost those. Okay, so I have three more pots to go through over there. I'm just going to get them done. Okay, so I have three hanging baskets just like this on the front of my deck. And they should have ranunculus in them too. So, and I can see the, the foliage here. Um, there's one here and one here. And I think there's two or three in each of these pots. So I'm just, again, gonna go through, pull them out. These have been getting watered every day, which I don't know if the ranunculus are gonna like, and I might need to grab a trowel to dig these out, because these get quite compacted with all the roots. 
That's just roots from something else. And at least see where these are. So I should be able to safely dig around here. These planters had, oh, I can't remember what all they had in them. They had giant parsley. They have these sweet peas that are just coming along now. They had petunias, these ranunculus. Oh, I think they had some spring flowering cabbage that I cut, or yeah, cabbage that I cut back a while ago. Um, so I just went through earlier this week, actually, I think it was, and cut these back quite a bit. All right, so there's a ranunculus in here. They're pretty wet because the automatic sprinklers are still this drip line is still going in there. I need to shut that off. Um, but yeah, there's a nice big ranunculus in there. So I'll have to rinse it off and uh, get it cleaned up. But I'll put it with the rest. And I'm just going to go through these three pots. I think, like I said, there's at least two. The other pots only actually seem to have one in them. But I can see this one has two. So I assume the others have at least two. The middle one might have three or it might have one. We'll see. Okay, so I got few good clumps out they're pretty some of them are pretty muddy they're all really full of soil some are just small like this some the ones in these hanging baskets are in quite large pieces um, looks like there's several stems several several um, corms that can come off they'll be divided into a lot of plants later on um, one of them actually as I pulled it out just kind of broke apart into I don't know three or four little pieces here. Um, I believe most of these are Persian peonies, uh, buttercup or ranunculus. Uh, some might have been, or no, Persian purple or pastel peonies, I think it is. I've had them for a couple of years now. And um, so I can't find the other tags that were in these other planters usually I just put the tag right in things like this especially that are perennial so I just want to kind of rinse them off a bit because the soil is actually quite muddy that's on here and I'd like to clean them off a little bit because I'll store them dry and I don't sometimes if it's like just dry soil I can just shake most of it off and then I would just do that I wouldn't wet them but since I um, have such muddy soil around them, I'm going to rinse them all off really well and then I'll let them sit out and dry um, for a week or so probably. So I'm just going to rinse these all off. Then we'll have a better look at them and we'll look at what I did with the gladiolus that I pulled out. Okay, so I've got them rinsed off and they're a lot cleaner than they were. I did have to break several apart just to get um, the mud off of them. They were quite, quite entangled and they had a lot of roots from the other plants on them. But here's a really good example of a ranunculus if you've never seen one before. That's uh, a really nice big, big ranunculus. It has, I can see one, two, three shoots for sure off of it. I think there's actually another little tiny one way back there. Um, so they're looking, this is nice and strong and healthy. They look amazing right now, um, but they're gonna go into storage and dry out. And this is gonna just be the smallest shriveled up little thing you've ever seen. You're gonna think it's, it's no good when you pull it out of storage. I'm gonna let them dry, like I said, for at least a week, dry out, just out in open air. I'll take them inside just cause they're kind of small and I don't want them blowing away or birds carrying them off, but I'm just counting them now. Like it's just amazing how big, how big they get. Um, cause I think most of what I planted um, this spring, now it's hard to say cause they do shrivel up so much, but most of what I planted this spring after I rehydrated, I think was like, this size to this size and now I have things like this coming out of the ground and I th think this is mostly divided like this one is probably what I'll plant next year I don't know we'll see once they dry out they might be easier to to see spots to pull apart but I had two in each of those three hanging baskets 
in one in each of five of those big pots. I couldn't find one in the one pot. So, um, and now, so what's that? That would have been 11. And I have, I have like around 30. And some of them are like these, where you can just see multiple. See how they just, they look like a bunch of like little octopuses piled up or something. Cause so you could take this where there's sh the stems are going that way. That's one. And then there's one over here. There's one over the back. There's one on the bottom. There's at least four in this clump here. And I guess two or three in this clump here. There's another clump with several on it. This one I think will be able to be divided up. So yeah, from just a few, I got several. Now, they didn't all sprout and grow for me in the spring, so I'm not gonna say I'm gonna have 30 ranunculus in my yard next year, but it sets me off to good chances of it anyways. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do with the ranunculus. I'm just gonna set them out now that they've kind of been washed the majority of the mud and extra roots that didn't even belong to them off. Uh, wash them off. I'm just going to set them to dry probably in my house just somewhere where they'll get some air circulation They'll probably just stay in this basket and uh, Once they've dried off or uh, dried out for a good week or two. I'll just put them in like a mesh like a, like a vegetable produce bag um, And I'll just hang them in the dark in a cool place um, I have a storage place where I put them usually with lots of my summer bulbs They usually store there. It's usually around 10 degrees sometimes like it's up to 15 um, Celsius, but things seem to do all right in that space. I think ideally for a lot of things, you'd want them slightly colder, but I don't think the ranunculus really even care that much as long as they're not freezing or getting too hot. Um, so that's the ranunculus. And then the glads, I think you can see here, I have them laid out and there's actually another shelf underneath this set here. Uh, and then these, and I've just laid out the ones that I've decided to keep. They'll just stay outside here on these wire shelves for probably a, a week again um, and just let some of this foliage die back. And you see this one's already starting to yellow. I had a couple, I don't see them now, but where the, the stems had already browned off and yellowed off. And so I've actually just separated them and these will store the same as the ranunculus, just in a cool, dark place with good air circulation in a bag again like could be a paper bag could be a mesh bag just something that's going to allow good air circulation they don't need any special um media put around them you know so hopefully that uh gives you an idea of what to do for some ranunculus and gladiolus storage in the fall if that's something you're needing to do and if nothing else hopefully you just you know got a little cheering up with a beautiful bouquet of flowers so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time bye I need to go clean up because I'm going to a football game tonight and this was supposed to be my underlayer because it's going to be cold. Um, so I need to go clean myself up. What was I thinking to get ahead go garden in this? Oh, mess.